No, we have Brent and uh, several people back from uh, L&D Talk, which happens every day, right? Yep. Third 8 a.m. Pacific time. 8, 8 a.m., not 8.30, 8 a.m. Pacific yep. L&D Talk on Blab, right? So you guys have things going on, right, for every – I've only participated maybe once or twice in that. But, uh, yeah. What are the things? What are the days? Yeah, so every day, um, Monday – is uh make it happen monday i think i think monday just opened up though i think we're going to change monday to something else tuesday used to be tech tuesday but recently changed to tactical tuesday and um not too sure what's up with my phone but i lost the stream it looks good here yeah very strange oh, i just had to refresh it okay um, but yeah, and then let's see, Wednesday we do, uh, Ajay Pengakar is the co-host and, uh, we talk about the business of training. So, and, and the operations side of the work that we do, right. All of the, the non-sexy stuff, the non-creative side of the house, um, that has to get done. And, um, um, and then let's see, Thursday, internet of things, Thursday with Anthony Altieri and uh, Friday, of course, today, Video Friday with Sam Rogers as the co-host. So today we had Mark Lassoff on as the guest. And uh, we basically talked about pet peeves, about what little things we can do to make our video, uh, online video better. So we talked nice. about things like uh, the rule of thirds, um, getting your heads at the top, not putting your subject's head right in the middle of the screen, using tripods. Uh, what else? Zoom with your feet is one of my favorite tips for people. Yes. Works with yes. works with both cameras and video. So, uh, if you if you have to zoom and you can zoom with your feet, do so. And by that, for those who are going, what in the heck does he mean by zoom with his feet? It just means taking a few big steps forward and fill in the spaces uh, around your subject or subject. Uh, and uh, why is that? Why would you zoom with your feet? Because when you zoom in using the lens or using your the digital zoom, everything gets very, very, very shaky. The, the more you zoom in and the less likely you are to get a good clean shot if you're making stills. And if you're doing video, it's going to look really shaky and um, not good. So yeah, normally you lose aperture as well, right? You lose the amount of light going in and uh, all kinds of issues. And it's more sensitive to your, you, even if you start shaking because you're holding it too long in the same position, you're going to see all that when you zoom in. It's yeah. all augmented. Yeah. All it's it's augmented just, it's zoom. in general, it's just a good practice to not touch the zoom if you don't have to, unless okay. you're using your zoom purposefully to get a narrower depth of field. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's certainly one way to do it. So, uh, it's, uh, you know, as you get more experienced utilizing your camera, uh, you can figure that stuff out, but without going into too many details, like I said, during L and D talk, when people ask me, well, Hey, how can I take better pictures? How do you do it? I always tell them heads at the top, zoom with your feet. If you can just start with those two things. Uh, yeah. you'll, you'll instantly begin to take better pictures, especially if it's somebody, a family member, friend or something that's shooting on auto all the time on a small digital pocket camera or whatever. Those two things normally clean up a lot of, uh, bad photos. Something I do too is like, if I'm um, you know, with kids, it's hard to always be on full manual and all, at least I put it, I put it on, uh, aperture priority mode where it's the apertures you, you do it in your you know with your uh manually uh and and so you can adjust the light going in and all that kind of stuff and and control the bokeh effect and all that the blurry background and all while everything else i so and everything like that is done automatically for you it normally gives you some better photos most of the time too than yep yeah, that's what I always tell people to do if you're going to if you want to learn to step up from auto to manual, don't step up to manual right away. Definitely use uh, aperture priority uh first and and get used to on the fly being able to adjust your uh aperture cuz then you then you start to build up that reflex habit of knowing which trigger on your phone actually affects the aperture. And then once you get used to that, then maybe you can switch over to shutter priority 
and start practicing with just using your shutter priority uh, to figure that out and then switch to full manual. Um, I don't necessarily um, encourage people to just jump to manual right away. Right. It's a little scary. All right, cool. Um, uh, so you um, you wanted to you're organizing like a, a, a different type of learning event, right? You want to talk more about that too? Yeah, so I'm the host for um, the TLDC.com. It's the Training, Learning, and Development Conference, and um, it's uh, basically going to be our effort. Uh, um, I don't know, the easiest way to put it is a training, learning, and development conference uh, produced and, and organized by training, learning, and development professionals. Uh, and uh, so, which doesn't necessarily happen all that often in our industry. Um, and so after years and years and years and years of hearing people say all of the things that they didn't like about regular events, uh, and how they wish they would change. Uh, this was the opportunity presented itself when I was asked to host to be able to make that kind of change and help our industry move forward and to help everybody learn to do things differently. And so I jumped on it um, for, for many, many, many different reasons. But, um, you know, I just have always wanted to have an opportunity to help our industry and to really help everybody just step their game up, move forward, you know, just get, not necessarily just the tactical stuff of click this button, you know, take a two hour session on how to use Captivate or how to use Storyline and all that kind of stuff. With today's technology, you get a lot of that learning online, right? On YouTube, you can, you can just Google stuff and learn how to use a lot of the tools um, that are out there. What, what we really want to do and really want to focus on is the, the practical work of training departments, right? And it's, that's not always, that doesn't always mean the development work. There's so much other non-sexy work that has to get done in order for training departments to be successful. And so we're looking at how we can do that. How do we use technology to do that? We're getting down to the very you know, tactical levels. We are going to have very, actually lots of hands-on sessions, but it's a different type of hands-on, right? It will be um, solving problems, uh, you know, drawing out, um, you know, solutions to existing problems and using, you know, uh, some hands-on workshops to work through some problems and to figure out, you know, come to the event with a pile of issues that you're dealing with and you've got at your disposal basically an entire consulting division to help answer any of your questions and help you solve any of those problems. And the nice thing is um, that the it's going to be a really small event which means you have direct access to those professionals, right? So you, um, if you've experienced a larger event in the past, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. It's easy to not be motivated to go say hi to somebody because there's just so many people, so much going on. It's easy to just kind of get lost in the shadows, especially if you're an introvert. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot harder to do that in a small environment, and it's a lot easier to confront some of the experts and just say, Hey, do you have 20 minutes to sit down with me? Uh, and we will, we will have to find blocks of time that you can sign up for as well. So if you have a particular expert that's, or a speaker that's on the agenda that you want to talk to, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one and get some coaching or some, uh, some information, we can set that up for you as well. So, so lots of really, really cool things that um, may not be articulated quite as well as we would like on the website, but it's why I always encourage people, you know, if you have any questions, if you really, really, really want to know what's going on and, um, you know, and, and why the event is being created and how we're creating it and what um, the secret sauce is going to be, uh, you know, just contact me directly. It's so much easier to... Uh, to do that for me to talk you through it than it is um, for us to 
try to explain it because you try to explain stuff like this on a website and some, it always ends up coming out as sounding just like marketing speak. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to get the real sense of what we're trying to do out there, especially when we're just a little tiny, you know, brand new event, right? I, I think a lot of, a lot of events need to be based on trust, right? You trust that the, event organizers are going to put on an event that's going to benefit you and that you're going to enjoy. And when you're new, there isn't any experience other than my personal experience and my network and my, uh, you know, standing in the industry. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's one of the things that I'm hoping will give people a sense of comfort that, yeah, I can deliver. Uh, so um, if anybody's, you know, went to DevLearn between, what is it, 2006 and 2012, uh, those, were, uh, those were events that I uh, helped program and produce. So um, I think there's a level of trust there that people can um, – people can expect. And I, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on the schedule and on the speaker list. Uh, a lot of people very impressed that we were able to pull together the speakers, the list of speakers that we have. Um, yes. And so, yeah, so I, we're, you know, very, very, very excited about it for sure. Yeah. Did it you looks have like any the, questions about it? You have a very nice list of speakers there, I think, uh, except that uh, you added me there. Then I kind of messed it up a little. Uh, but it looks like a very group, a good group of people. Um, and, you know, I, I think it'll be a nice, just the fact that, like you said, it's a small, you know, a small event. Uh, you get to be part of something that is um, at the ground level, just starting, right? should be cool but it's something that is even though it's new it's based on a lot of experience that you have had and, and others involved in the field as well so it should be really cool um uh you you mentioned the idea of coaching and maybe one-on-one with some of the speakers is how are you organizing that how can people actually um is that something formal part of the process for the uh the conference where i go into my, my agenda and i sign up to meet somebody and talk about my specific uh lnd problem that i'm having or a project i have that i'm working on or is it something more informal that you're just encouraging by having some free time in between sessions it's a little bit of both right we, it's definitely going to be a mix uh, a lot of it is going to depend on resources as well but uh, the idea is and, and i hate to use this term but um i know it, it it resonates with some people and that's sort of that, that idea of the unconference, right? And there are some conferences out there for those who don't know the term that are, uh, there is no agenda and no speaker list. Everybody just shows up and on, you know, within the first few hours, there's a, there's a, a board put up, people pitch their ideas and everybody votes on which thing they want to have presented. And then an hour later, an agenda is created by the the staff. Um, the ones, you know, the sessions that got the most votes get put into a time bracket, and then uh, and then you're good to go. So uh, we're not doing all of that, but I do see the value in that to a certain extent because when you're looking at a small group of people, and uh, by that I mean you know two to four hundred people, you're uh, you know, you're, you're looking at um, a lot of different options, right? You could have different collections of people coming and it, you can't, you can't predetermine everything about an event and which I think is one of the, um, one of the downfalls of, of some of the uh, long-term existing events. Um, I want very specifically for TLDC to be very dynamic. I want the to be an element of serendipity if there is uh you know all of a sudden i mean maybe it just so happens that we randomly have you know 50 people that are all from the same industry i mean i, I don't know i mean it can happen uh you know by all means we should take advantage of that right we should take advantage of of that and be able to very 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 quickly 
pull something together that's very specific, uh, you know, for that industry, either to have a conversation, to uh, create a quick panel of experts that can talk specifically to it, and then get all of those folks in a particular room at a particular time. Um, you know, I mean, and there's so, so, I mean, there's a lot that can be done. And these are the types of things where you just kind of have to, and, I, and I know people will roll their eyes at me and say, no, you can't do that. But you just kind of have to trust that we're going to take care of you when you show up. You know, uh, we, the, we're not going to know everything uh, about it until we get there. And, um, you know, what we do know we are confident in the things that we do want to share with you. So don't get me wrong. This isn't like a loosey goosey sort of thing where there's no formality. You can go to the website and you can see, um, you know, the formal nature of it, but um, just know that underneath is a real sense of wanting to serve you, wanting to serve you, the attendee and your very specific needs. And there are a lot of people that have told me that can't be done, that can't be done. You can't do that with a big crowd of people. You can't, you know, you can't do personalized learning, you know, in a big environment, in a big event environment like that. And my answer is one, why not? And two, why don't we walk the walk, right? If that's the kind of thing that we're talking about as an industry, why, can't, why don't we try? Why don't we try to do it? If we can't do it as an industry amongst ourselves, how can we expect to do it within our, uh, you know, our, our workplaces and, you know, and, and be able to expect a culture, a corporate culture to be able to do it. If, if, if all of us that tout it can't even accept it and do it amongst ourselves, I mean, we all go to events right now and accept the sage on the stage. Right. And yet we're the ones who will be the first to condemn that method of teaching and to be very, speak very negatively toward it, you know? And so my expectation is, is that, yes, we're going to have some of that because it's really important that, you know, the speakers that we're bringing in have something to say, right? And so they are going to have an opportunity um, to speak and you are going to have an opportunity to just sit and listen and be entertained um, by them. But we're definitely shortening that, uh, the amount of time that that occurs. And we're ramping up the hands-on and the work, um, the, the activity side of the work that we do. And hopefully baking in a lot of what we talk about in our industry, right? And cool. Yeah. You, um, so, It's going to be a, a one-day event, right? No, no, no. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So three Monday, days, Tuesday. two and a half days. Two and a half days in? In San Diego. Beautiful, sunny yeah, yeah. San Diego in October. October 3, 4, and 5. Oh, nice. Yeah, I didn't realize it was going to be. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good weather. Yeah, and if you want to check out, check out on the website, um, or I think it's on the Facebook page. I did a, I did a walkthrough. I did a, I think I did a Facebook live where I did a walking tour of the of the site. It's a Hyatt Mission Bay, and um, so if anybody's really interested in in getting a closer look at that and just hearing me sort of ramble on about the different uh, areas, and if you really want to get a feel for the place, it is definitely not corporate. It is definitely not your traditional uh, conference venue. It is much more relaxed. It's got a very, very um, casual, tropical atmosphere. Um, and we're going to be playing off that theme big time. We've got a, mm -hmm. uh, an area. We have a very special um, guest that's going to be um, crafting a reflection zone. So uh, not necessarily a zone. I don't know what specifically we're going to call it yet. But we're going to be tying in this idea of um, you know, learning is all about reflection, right? And reflecting on what you've just uh, consumed and being able to practice that, right? And not only practice it yourself, but to be able to learn how to teach others and how to utilize, um, you know, reflection in your strategies within the corporate space. And so everything that you do and experience at the event, there will be an element that teaches you how to take those elements back to the workplace so that you can implement them. 
So what does that look like, that reflection time zone, et cetera? What, what would that look like? Everybody that signs up for that or everybody at the conference? No, it's just, it's, it'll be an existing uh, room that we've got set up and you can go in there at any time. Uh, there will be some planned activities in that space and it will also be available just for uh, open conversations. Um, you know, reflection doesn't always have to happen alone, right? So it will be a, a, a place for people to hang out together and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, still, it's still a work in progress, like a lot of the uh, little bits and pieces of the event. Um, but, uh, in general, we're really, really, really excited about it. And it's going to be, I think it's, so it's almost fun. like a, a concept of a speaker ready room or a place where people can walk in and out. And maybe there's some activities planned in there, but most of the time people just can walk in and out as attendees and just talk about whatever is, uh, yes. the top of their a little mind. Bit, a little bit more than that. Right. I mean, we really are pushing this idea of reflection as a, as a learning tool, as a as something that we should be taking advantage of, um, not mm -hmm. only for ourselves but as an industry and applying it. So there will definitely be some instructional sessions as well um, as we go through it. I'm I'm looking at what Craig's asking in the live chat, and uh, we definitely have uh, discounts available in the rooms. So if you're going to be um, registering, be sure to uh, register and mention um, at the Hyatt Mission Bay, just mention our event and uh, you'll get the discount. Um, and I highly, highly recommend staying um, on, in that hotel on the site uh, because there, it's just, there's, there's going to be a lot going on and you're going to be want, you're going to want to be right in the action. So uh, I would, I would highly encourage that. May I, I throw you on the spot? And um, since so, I I just love networking, meeting new people, meeting again the people that I had already met, and, and talking. And that's how kind of how we met. It's through events and stuff. Yeah, I've learned and stuff like that. And uh, I I go to the training magazine events and all of that. So I think there is definitely a place for big events, uh, um, and then there is a place for small events as well. So different things, different uh, types of environments and situations. Right? Yeah, I mean, or, I, I think that, um, you know, for some people that have never, ever, ever been to an event before, you know, if they come to an event like ours, they're going to have a great experience. But um, my hope is, is that we're going to spoil them to any other experience. Uh, you know, nothing else they go to is going to be quite the same. But, uh, you know, which that was just my segue, though. I was so as if being in a different, a smaller, different type of event, uh, maybe. So what is, for you, what would be the ideal event for learning? What, so you've already hinted at, at like one-on-one, maybe coaching, maybe reflection built in. Uh, what else would make an ideal event for you? Some things, not just everything that will make ideal, some ideas. Well, I mean, a lot of it is, um, you know, exactly what you were saying. So here's something that, that um, people say a lot, right? It's the, it's the hallway conversations, right? Um, and I think we've all been talking about the hallway conversations for years now, and it's almost become cliche, and it's a, it's a marketing cliche to say, you know, we're, we're bringing the hallway conversations into the – in building it into the conference and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think um, it, it's, it's hard to say it without sounding markety like that, but my, my goal and my thinking of what I want it to be is, uh, is almost exactly that, right? We have a formal structure, but we have this ability for people to talk and to, have conversations and to meet each other and to have activities where you you get to, to meet your peers and your colleagues and the speakers in much more um, uh, intimate surroundings, really. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. I mean, it's probably not a good word, but um, it's, it's the closest I can come up with. But if we, you know, here's the other thing too. Here's the other piece of it. It's, it's, it's getting work done, right? This is the other piece. So it's not a boondoggle. I don't, I don't want 
I mean, if people want to come and pay for the registration and just hang out on the beach, fine. I'm okay with that. And you want to write off a vacation, you know, you're, you know, happy to do that as well, but that's not why we're here. It's not the purpose of the event. It, I know that there are a lot of training professionals, learning and development professionals out there that have a lot of questions. They have a lot of business problems that they're trying to solve. And what I want an event like this to be is a place for them to come and almost just like a bazaar of consultants, right? Whatever type of problem you have, you should be able to walk through and find somebody there, either an attendee or a speaker or a session or whatever, that is addressing or having the exact same problem or a similar problem. And with the right strategy, you should be able to walk into an event like this with a plan, with an idea of the, the issues you have and what you're trying to solve, be able to leave the event with an action plan, ready to go, ready to take back and ready to implement. Because we all know, besides loving the hallway conversations, we've all experienced going to an event, having a great time, getting all fired up, and then getting back to the office, and all of a sudden work hits you in the face. And it's it's a it's a dream. Everything you just went through, everything that you just learned, everything you wanted to, you know, think about when you got back to the office. Now it's just a dream. It's in the past, and now you've got a reality to deal with. Um, part of having the reflection zone is helping people deal with that emotionally, right? So here are the things. It's easy for for people to put together a session, let's say, and say, here are the five steps to implementing a plan. Uh, you know, but what we don't talk about is all of the political stuff around it, right? all the emotional stuff around it. What, what is your team like? What are you like? What, are, what is it that, uh, you know, what are the barriers, right? It's not always a technology barrier that keeps us from doing projects. And it's not always um, an executive saying, no, you can't do that. And it's not always a budget problem. A lot of times it's a communication problem. It's a people problem. And we say that in our industry, right, about our customers when they say, oh, we need training for this. And we, we go back to them and say, no, I've done my analysis. and It's not a training problem. Right? We don't ever turn the camera back on ourselves and realize that a lot of the reasons why we don't get the respect that we do and why we don't get the projects done that we'd like to get done is because we have issues with how we do the business and how we succeed in the work that we do. And that's the additional kind of stuff that I want an event like this to bring to the table to help people be successful. It's a lot more than just knowing how to use the tools, knowing basic instructional design and uh, you know, being able to you know, administer an LMS or you know, anything else, right? There's so many different you know, types of uh, environments and ecosystems that everybody has to navigate. And um, I, I think if we reflect a little bit more on ourselves and our industry and our teams, we can figure out strategies and paths for being able to get the work done. Marco says it's also a negotiation problem, right? Yeah, exactly. We talk about this on Wednesdays with Ajay Pinkakar when we're talking about you talk about the work that we do to our um, our stakeholders, right? Whether that's the executive leadership, whether it is um, a manager of a department that you're trying to help deliver some training on, you know, um, all of all of these different things. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Like sometimes we we. We may have a design a document or a whole design process, but we don't communicate that process with our clients well, or we don't do a very good job at uh, negotiating the, the roles and responsibilities, doing review and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, but little things that we tend to forget when we're yep. uh, managing a project. So how are you going to make sure that these types of conversations are the emphasis of the, the event then? Is that reflecting in the way you select the speakers, the sessions? Well, one of the things that we're trying to do differently is we're, you know, we're asking that all of the speakers stick around for the whole time, right? And in a lot of cases, um, speakers will roll into um, an event and they roll in an hour before their session 
they go, they deliver their session, they hang out for a little while afterwards, and then boom, they're back up to the airport and gone off to their next gig. Um, and that's not just keynotes, that's regular session speakers too. I mean, a lot of these uh, you know, speakers that do the circuit and, and speak at all the different events, um, you know, they, there's nothing left for them to get at most of the typical events because they've seen it all, they've heard it all, they've read it all, they've written most of the books, they've, you know, been the ones to write all the blogs and all that kind of stuff. And what um, one of the things that we're doing differently is having everybody stick around. So um, actually, I'm going to have to put you on pause for a second. All right. I forgot about a meeting that I had. I got a boogie. Sorry, dude. All right. So I think we're going to close for today. So if you guys want to go check out uh, the TLDC.com, uh, that's the TLDC.com, the conference that Brent's organizing. Um, and maybe we'll see you guys there. But uh, he has to go. He has a, a, a meeting right now. And uh, we will... Talk again next Friday. Bye-bye.